So let's go over this poem that Prabhupada wrote on the Commonwealth Pier and we can learn nice things about preaching and about Krishna consciousness. So he begins, My dear Lord Krishna, you are so kind upon this useless soul. So this is the proper way to pray. That you present yourself meek and humble. But I do not know why you have brought me here. Now you can do whatever you like with me. So that's full surrender. Full surrender means, what does Lord Chaitanya say in his final Shikshastakam? He says, you can embrace me or you can break my heart. Either way, you are my Lord unconditionally. So unconditional here, you can do whatever you like with me. But I guess you have some business here. Otherwise, why would you bring me to this terrible place? So, this is explained in purports of the Bhagavatam. Krishna's business, the material world, was created for two purposes. One purpose is for those who want to enjoy for those who want to uh, deny Krishna, those who want to be independent, then this material world is for those people who want to imitate Krishna, forget him, and enjoy. Go ahead. Especially in Kali Yuga. Go for it. Enjoy your senses. But Prabhupada mentions the other purpose of the material world is for those who want to get out, those who want to become liberated, those who want to be delivered. That is the other purpose. Which purpose do you think Prabhupada has? Yes, to take us out. Yes, that's right. He is working on behalf of Krishna. He is Krishna's salesman. Otherwise, why would you bring me to this terrible place? Terrible, there would be so many reasons why. As he mentioned, everybody will be mentioned again. Everybody is mad with materialism. At least in India, there were places where people would go for spiritual cultivation like the Dhams, the holy places and he was coming from Vrindavan so compared to Vrindavan he's coming to Boston so yes from the spiritual vision which is what Prabhupada has spiritual vision material world Boston America is a terrible place most of the population here is covered by the material modes of ignorance and passion. Absorbed in material life, they think themselves very happy and satisfied. And that is Maya. Maya is your suffering. You're in the material modes and you think, I'm okay. I remember in the 70s, there was this book, I'm okay, you're okay. We used to see that book all the time. When we would go out distributing, that was one of the most best sellers. I'm okay, you're okay. Like, hey, whatever you like, that's fine. So that is Maya. Maya means, I'm a worm in stool. Ah, this is good. Right? The animals, the dogs, they're going about and they think they're in, but we look at their life and we go, oh my God, 
how horrible a life. You all know what a dog's and hog's life in India is. But they're very happy. That's Maya. And therefore they have no taste for the transcendental message of Vasudev. Yes. You can't be fully absorbed in material life and be attracted to the message of Krishna. Because Krishna's message is Vairagya Vidya. The message of Bhagavatam, spiritual message is knowledge and detachment. Not that, oh, I want to be spiritual and at the same time, I want everything material. That's, no, that doesn't work like that. It's either one or the other. I do not know how they will be able to understand it. But I know your causeless mercy can make everything possible because you are the most expert mystic. That final verse of the Bhagavad Gita, Rama. What's the final verse of Bhagavad Gita, the first line? There it is. Yatra Yogeshwara Krishna. He's the master of all mystics. That's Krishna. So Krishna can do anything. And a pure devotee like Prabhupada has full faith that yes, Krishna can do anything. How will they understand the mellows of devotional service? O oh Lord, I am simply praying for your mercy so that I will be able to convince them about your message, not his own message. He's coming to bring Krishna's message. That's the preacher. He's Krishna's salesman. If, a, if you're a salesman for a company, you have to sell on behalf of the company, not your own. If they find out that you're making side deals on your own, just like, you know, Shamachandra from Panama. So he had one employee. She was local Panamanian woman. And she was competent. So he was giving a lot of responsibility to her. But after a couple of years, he found out she was making all these side deals on her own, taking away business from the company to line her own pocket. So when he found out, hit the road. So the pure devotee is Krishna's salesman. And he does everything on Krishna's account. Or the example Prabhupada always gives. The bank teller takes your money and puts it in your account. Right? And sometimes it so happens that they do that skimming. They take little bit and the big crooks, right? by so many tricks they can just take one penny but they're taking one penny from millions of accounts right and it adds up until they're caught how will they understand the mellows of devotional service O oh lord i am simply praying for your mercy so that i will be able to convince them about your message. So, we learn in the Bhagavad Gita, there's that verse, that the foolish person thinks, I'm doing everything. I'm the one who's doing everything. But we learn from Bhagavad Gita, who is the ability in man? Krishna. Right? Krishna says, I'm the ability in man. So the foolish person takes credit for everything. I got nobody to thank. I did it. Whereas a devotee knows, yes, I was able to do these things by Krishna's grace. Arjuna realized that 
after Krishna disappeared, when Arjuna returned to Hastinapur, and Yudhisthir questioned him, what's the matter? You look so dejected. So Arjuna told him that here is the same Gandiva bow, but now nothing. And he couldn't even protect the women that Krishna had put him in charge of. They were kidnapped. But who kidnapped them? Krishna. That's why he couldn't protect him. But Arjuna was saying, I'm the same Arjuna, but now I can't do anything. So Arjuna realized, yes, I was able to do all these things, defeat demigods, and Arjuna was victorious on the battle of Kurukshetra, but he realized actually it was all because of Krishna, not that I have some independent power. And that story, Duryodhan and Arjuna both went to Dwaraka when Krishna was sleeping. So they were waiting for Krishna to wake up. Duryodhan went to the head thinking, when Krishna wakes up, he'll see me. Where was Arjuna? At the feet. And when Krishna woke up, who did he see? Arjuna. He didn't see Duryodhana. And Duryodhana said, hey, I was here first. So Duryodhan chose what? The army. And Arjuna chose? And what did Duryodhan think? Yes, Duryodhan thought, oh, it's Arjuna, what a clown, what a fool. But who made the right calculation? Arjuna, obviously. All living entities have become under the control of the illusory energy by your will. Now, please don't misunderstand. Yes. The illusory energy is also not independent. We learn from Bhagavad Gita, Mayad Yakshena Prakriti Suyate Satchara. She works under Krishna's direction. She's under Krishna's thumb. But don't misunderstand. Because Prabhupada is saying, all living entities have come under the control of by your will. So you may read that and think, why did Krishna put me under the control? What did I do? It sounds like that Krishna is vindictive, doesn't it? If you, if, you, if you just take it on face value, it seems like Krishna did that to me? Yeah, but we learn elsewhere that Krishna putting us under the illusory energy was the second move. We made the first move. That's the part. And that's explained in Bhagavatam, second canto, chapter 9, verse 1. And that purport. Prabhupada said, We indicated to Krishna that we wanted to be independent. Then Krishna's subsequent move after that we're placed under the control of the illusory energy. That's an important, he's not mentioning it here, but that's the answer to that challenge. It's not that Krishna put us here indiscriminately or he's playing favorites. We also learn from Bhagavad Gita Samoham Sarva Bhuteshu. Krishna's equal. If, if Krishna was like this, then you could say Krishna's not equal because he's putting some people into the prison. But no, we asked, we indicated. So, in that purport, Bhagavatam 291, Prabhupada gives the example. The crying child asks the parent for the moon. Is that possible? 
No, so what does the parent do? He brings a mirror. Brings a mirror. Ah, now I have the moon. Yeah, in the mirror. It's not the reality, it's a reflection, right? But the child is happy thinking, oh, I got the moon. So the same way, this material world is a I perverted, not just a reflection, perverted reflection, topsy-turvy. Yes, upside down, 15th chapter of Bhagavad Gita. Is the offering getting together? Okay, good. And if you like, by your will, they can also be released from the clutches of illusion. So, yes, nobody else can deliver you. No demigod can give you release from the clutches of the material world. We learned that from Bhagavad Gita. Daiviyesha gunamayi, mamamaya duratyaya, mam evaye prabhadyante. Mayam etam. Krishna says there's only one way to get out of this prison. Surrender. That's it. There's no other option. You have to pay the price of full surrender. Then you can be released. I wish that you may deliver them. Therefore, if you so desire their deliverance, then only will they be able to understand your message. So yes, first they have to understand Krishna's message, then they can surrender. Not that Pra Prabhupada is saying, just deliver them. No. Their deliverance comes from when they understand the message of Krishna, then surrender. The words of Srimad Bhagavatam are your incarnation. And if a sober person repeatedly receives it with submissive oral reception, then he or she will be able to understand your message. So this is how one actually understands Bhagavatam or Gita. You have to be sober. So that sober means your senses are controlled following the regulative principles. If you're not following the principles, if you're sinful, you're not going to be able to understand Srimad Bhagavatam and Bhagavad Gita. Can't, it's impossible. And I told you the story of that lady in Panama when she asked me, Swamiji, can you give me peace? So I asked her, do you eat meat? Yes. Do you drink alcohol? Yes. Do you gamble? Yes. Then I said, how can I give you peace? It's not possible. It's not possible. And also submissive oral reception. That you hear, yes, you can ask questions, but constantly challenging, you're simply wasting your time. Submissive oral reception. One will become liberated from the influences of the modes of passion and ignorance, and thus all inauspicious things accumulated in the heart will disappear. So yes, that's called abhadra, the inauspicious things that are in the heart. So they, are, they go there because of our association with passion and ignorance. But once you come to the mode of goodness, then you can begin to remove those anarthas when you take initiation. The initiation, that's called, there's a series, Bhajana Kriya. The spiritual master engages you in regulative principles and 
devotional activities. There's a reason why the spiritual master engages you because the next stage is Anartha Nivriti. You are, there's a bell on the tray. That means you should be noticing how your unwanted materialistic things are gradually going away. You can self-test yourself if you're noticing that your material desires are increasing, then there's something wrong with your bhajan kriya. But if you're actually doing proper bhajana kriya, you should be noticing your material fever is going down. The answer to that question is your execution of bhajana kriya needs to become of a higher quality, a higher standard. Now, someone like you, you've got one foot in the spiritual world and you've got one foot in the material world. So, during the week, you're dealing directly with the material world, all right? You're not living in a temple and all day just doing devotional service. So that's another reason why it's up and down. So that's why it's very important. On the weekends, relax. No more EES. Weekends has to be temple, reading, namahat, right? Friday night, Saturday, Sunday has to be spiritual activity. Then gradually you'll become more steady. Because during the week you're getting contaminated. What's that? You're doing what? Yes. Yes, but, but besides that, you're also still dealing with the material world. It's just like if you go into the kitchen while you're cooking, you're going to get hot. Why? And burned also. Right? You're in the kitchen. So... As soon as you start to get involved with the material world, you're going to get burned. It's just the nature of the beast. So, whenever you have spare time, hear, chant, hear, chant. Okay? As long, look, as long as you are involved in the material world, there is going to be contamination. Okay? If you want to be fully, then that's when you retire from EES and you're doing full-time, 24 hours devotional service. You're getting to that stage very soon, right? Oh, you, you already are. You... When did you? Okay. So do you understand? Does it make sense what I'm saying? Yes, it all, everything comes down to association. Everything, everything, right? 
That's why and on the weekends Okay, that's why I said you got one foot in the spiritual world and one foot in the material world. All right, so you're like on the Jaladuta. All right, seasickness, vomiting, headache. Hang in there. And keep doing twice Namahat program here. At that all helps. That all helps. All right, let's continue. How will I make them understand this message of Krishna consciousness? I am very unfortunate, unqualified, and the most fallen. Therefore, I am seeking your benediction so that I can convince them, for I am powerless to do so on my own. Very important point. As soon as I think I'm the doer, that is when I'm going to have so much pro problem. There's that incident with Bhima and then Bhima was shown something how you think Bhima thought I am so powerful but then I think it was Krishna showed him something that uh, you're not who you think you are and also when Bhima uh, met Hanuman Bhima thought Hanuman is just a monkey so he said okay move my tail go ahead and he, he couldn't do it. So the, the uh, a fool has so much belief in his own powers. Duryodhan was the same way. Duryodhan, every time it was pointed out that don't fight this war because the Pandavas are too powerful, Duryodhan would simply not listen because he thought, I am all powerful. He was so he had too much, uh, uh, how should you say, faith in his own abilities. But the devotee, here it is I'm powerless on my own to do anything. I need Krishna's help. Somehow or other, O oh Lord, you have brought me here to speak about you. Now, my Lord, it is up to you to make me a success or failure as you like. So this is the mentality of a preacher. This is it. If I'm going somewhere to preach, this should be my mentality. Okay, here I am. I have come here to preach. Now, Lord Krishna, it's up to you. Make me a success or failure as you like. O oh, spiritual master of all the worlds, I can simply repeat your message. That to me is very, very important. We simply repeat 
the message of Guru and Krishna. We repeat what Krishna is saying and whatever you have learned from your spiritual master, we simply repeat it. That's all. So if you like, you can make my power of speaking suitable for their understanding. And that's another aspect of preaching. Making it suitable so that the people can understand. Not that you talk like this and after the lecture, what did he say? I don't understand the word. We should speak in such a way that the message is, becomes clear. That was Prabhupada's genius in his books. His books could be read by uh, an, anybody, whether it be PhD or just a person with common knowledge. It was, was possible. That's Prabhupada's genius. Only by your causeless mercy will my words become pure. And that's the key. Purity is the force. I am sure that when this transcendental message penetrates their hearts, they will certainly feel gladdened and thus become liberated from all unhappy conditions of life. Yes, what do we learn from Bhagavad Gita? Susukam kartum avyayam. Yes, once this message of Krishna consciousness is understood, you should become prasanatma. You should become jolly. That's the key. You read, like I was explaining before, I used to read that Chaitanya Charitamrita when I had one foot in the spiritual world and one foot in the material world like you for seven, eight years. And that Chaitanya Charitamrita gave me so much peace. Or it may be Bhagavad Gita, like Rama. I know every day she's reading Bhagavad Gita, am I right? Yes, because that's where she finds her peace and solitude, like that. And if you're actually reading, it won't take long. It should make you happy and peaceful. What did he say? Jai. So Madhav, are you reading? Good. What are you reading? You like Krishna book? Kind of? Good. I will be questioning you. All right. Oh Lord, I am just like a puppet in your hands. So if you have brought me here to dance, then make me dance. Make me dance, oh Lord. Make me dance as you like. Puppet. The puppet has no independence. The puppeteer moves and the puppet just... So, we want... Oh, and what did Krishna tell Arjuna? The universal form. Who are you? What is your mission? And the universal form said, I am time, but I want you to be an instrument in the fight. So the puppet means Prabhupada wants to be Krishna's instrument. He simply wants to do how Krishna wants him to do. This is full surrender, complete surrender. My Lord, I will act as you like and dance because in the spiritual world, they don't walk, they dance. In the spiritual world, they don't talk, they sing. That spiritual world is unlike the material world. I have no devotion, nor do I have any knowledge. But I have strong faith 
in the holy name of Krishna. I hope all of us get to that stage of strong faith in the holy name of Krishna. And the proof of that is that you become a chanter. If you have strong faith in the holy name of Krishna, then you become a chanter. Are you a chanter? And you like kirtan, right? So if you want that, then you have to have strong faith in the holy name. Then you can do an amazing kirtan. I have been designated as Bhaktivedanta. That was a title that was given to him by the Gaudiya Math. Not that Prabhupada gave that himself. There was an official thing. The Gaudiya Math gave him that title, Bhakti Vedanta, which means knowledge with devotion. And now if you like, you can fulfill the real purport of Bhakti Vedanta. Signed, the most unfortunate, insignificant beggar, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, on board the ship Jaladuta, Commonwealth Pier, what city? Boston. Boston, Massachusetts, 18th of September, 1965. Srila Prabhupada Ki. Yeah.